Hello, it's April 16th, 2024. The interviewee is Hal Block. I'm Andriette Redmond, the interviewer, and we're in Neptune, New Jersey, and the language will be English. Hi, what is your name and your birthday, and where were you born? Uh, I'm Hal Block. I was born January 21st, 1932, in Gelsenkirchen, Germany. And your first language was? My first language was German. And your parents' names? My mother was Kate Strauss. And um, no, my mother's name was Kate Wolf. She later became Kate Strauss uh, when my dad passed away. Uh, my father was Walter Ernest Block, a doctor in Gelsenkirchen. And when were they born and where? Ah, uh, when were they born and where? My mother was born in Gelsenkirchen, and my father was born in, uh, and she was born in 1910, and I believe he was born in, uh, in February of 1898 in Cologne, Germany. And um, were they religious? My mother's family was religious, so I don't believe my father's family were. Uh, we did practice some holidays, I, I'm told, while we were in Germany, uh, but we did not uh, participate in a re active religious uh, practices when we were in the United States due to the fact that where we moved, it was a non-religious community. There were no temples. There were no Jews. And what did your dad do for a living? My father was a doctor, general practitioner, they call it today. And um, was he ever in the military? No, he was not. His relatives were? Uh, my uncle, his, his, his brother uh, was in World War I as an aviator in the Luftwaffe. And where, were, where was he born? He, uh, he was also, as far as I know, born in Cologne, he later resided in Hartford, Connecticut. And was one in a prison camp? No, I had I had a an uncle on my mother's side who was a uh, uh, in the U.S. Army uh, as a um, interpreter interpreter uh, for pris for German prisoners of war for the United States. You know, uh, interviewing them on what they could find out about what the Nazis were doing, etc. And what were your parents like? They were wonderful. <laughs> what were they like? Uh, my father was, very, was a strict German. He was had a German temper, and he he you did you did what you were told, and you were on time, always on time. If you weren't on time, you didn't get your dinner. You got sent to bed. Uh, my mother was uh, wonderful. She she adored me. I adored her. And uh, she, she made me the person that I am today. And how did they meet? Well, I think she went for a physical examination to the, for the, local, the local doctor in Gelsenkirchen, because that's where he established himself. And uh, they met that way. And at that time, I believe they were still doing what they call matchmaking. And my grandparents wanted my mother to marry a professional. And uh, did they go to the synagogue? I don't know. Or do you remember any uh, holidays? I don't remember anything about, uh, I was three years old when I came over. Uh, I have probably zero memory of what happened in Germany, except for one incident maybe. And that was my, the, my nursemaid took me to the park. That's all I remember about Germany. Do you have any remember, memory of your house? No. Or any toys or food? The only toys I could remember is a scooter. And I, why it was never made and sold in the United States, I still would like to do it. It was a scooter, but it was chain driven. So you had, you were pumping a, a, a pedal and it was, you were propelling yourself. It was great. And also the only other toy that I can remember that uh, carried over was um, a train. They made wonderful trains, and they also had nice little soldiers and little things to go around the, the train tracks. So that, that was nice. 
Any foods that you remember? No, no. I mean, the typical German food, uh, you know, uh, but nothing special. Did your mother keep cooking German style food in the U.S.? My mother never cooked before. Oh, who was cooking? Uh, we both sides of our fa of the family uh, were well to do. They both had nice businesses, and so they had help for me. They helped uh, with the, with the, with the cooking, with everything. Uh, they did the washes. They did everything like that. Um, so. Uh, I, I, she learned to cook because she had to. What else can you tell me that from the stories you've heard about Germany, like what life was like there? I really, they did not talk too much uh, about their experiences in Germany. Uh, ours was something where we, we didn't hardly, I don't speak uh, uh, hardly any German. Uh, only because they want to assimilate. They didn't want to dwell on the past. They only wanted to build a future in the United States. Uh, and so we didn't, we did not get into anything other than some minor stories that I'm sharing some with you. Did they ever experience anti-Semitism back there? Well, yeah, when they, uh, when, when the uh, Nazis were a party, uh, and, and the brown shirts came around. Uh, my father had a very nice practice going, but it was sort of said that the, uh, the non-Jewish doctor was sort of jealous about this Jewish doctor who just came into town. And uh, it was uh, that they were coming for him one day and they were going to drag the, the brown shirts, the Nazis were going to drag him through the streets. His secretary, who was non-Jewish, informed him of this, and that's the time when uh, my uncle arrived, took him at our house, and took him to the local police station could you, they, because you could give yourself up for safety reasons. And that's what happened. So we did experience anti-Semitism, and of course, um, later on, uh, the Nazis, you know, uh, had basically when my mother was helping get cameras and stuff to the United, to the United States for my father to to cash in and and get his medical degree over here and have money for it, uh, they did strip search her and stuff like that. Um, but that that's what we that's what I have understood to, to be. Where was she when she was strip searched? She was on her way from Gelsenkirchen to Antwerp, where the ship was. In which the purser, there was a purser who was a friend of my father's, uh, who uh, would take the Leicas cameras and take them to a, uh, a store called Willoughby's in New York, and he would be paid money and he would uh, subsist on that and whatever else. Where did your mother get the cameras? Bought them. Yeah. Again, we still had money when we were in Germany, so she was able to to, to buy things. Did they have a sense that things were changing and that they'd need to leave? Do you know what? Well, they I said? guess when it came to drag them through the streets, that was enough. And that was the first and, time. And, and, thing, and things were kept getting worse. And so many people were very fortunate. My father, that my father got over here because he brought in at least ten or twelve people uh, into this country, and he sponsored them. And uh, they all became very, uh, when I look back at it, very productive citizens. Wonderful. And just curious about um, what kind of home did you live in? Was it a house or a, an apartment building or just curious about that? Well, I was looking for some pictures on that and there was a place called the Cayuga Manor. That's where we first settled at Cayuga, New, Cayuga, New York. Oh, in New York. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was a population of about 320 people. The main industry there was a milling company and my father was to be the mill doctor. That did not turn out to be, and that may be, for, uh, I will not say what the reasons are, but I, I sort of surmise that they had something to do that we were German. I don't think that they even knew in that town what the word Jew, or Jewish meant. Uh, but I, I think we were foreigners and they didn't. But we lived at the Cayuga Manor, which was a large, large 
house, boarding house, and he was it was big enough evidently for him to establish his practice there uh, until such time as uh, he uh, he we found he found a home, a house uh, which he, he rented for eighteen dollars a month. That was in nineteen thirty six thirty seven, and he used uh, one of the rooms in that house as a, a as an office, and my mother uh, was his nurse, and um, and we lived there for uh, uh, I don't know till I was in fourth grade. That's good. So, if you don't mind, if we could back up a sure. little bit, because I want to hear the story of exactly how they came over. Uh, and before that, I think you mentioned you you may have worn a star. Were you were you may? I think there is some thought about the star. And I know that, uh, you know, when you're a child, you sort of mimic other kids. And everybody was saying, Heil Hitler. And my mother said that I Heil Hitler, and I was admonished for it because Jews were not allowed to Heil Hitler. Uh, that's one story that I do remember. Uh, and uh, were there other kids that were Jewish around you? Other families in the town that we moved. Yeah, no, that they, you were in Gelsen. Oh, in Gelsen Kirchen. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I know there are pictures of me with other children, but uh, I assume there were. I don't know. Okay, and then so what was the journey that your parents made? I know your dad left first, and what my what dad happened? left, and we stayed in in the Gelsen Kirchen. Uh, or I'm I'm the, the timeline I I'm not a hundred percent sure of, but uh, in 1930 in August of of 1936, my mother and I uh, were passengers on the SS Penland, and we came to the United States. So was your dad? He went before you did. Yeah, my dad went uh, a couple of years before. What was his journey? Uh, again, my timeline is not a hundred percent right. But he he left, uh, I believe, in 1934. Uh, he he was also a pers a, a doctor on a uh, on the Penland, and so he traveled be also between New York and Antwerp. Eventually, uh, he migrated into Canada, and from Canada, uh, he moved uh, migrated into the United States, where we we were. But went ended up going to Cayuga, New York. When my mother and I came over, we lived there until I was in end of fourth grade. Moved to Auburn, New York, where he also established a second practice and uh, did very well there. Do you know why he went to Canada? I don't know. I I don't know if it was easier to get in the United States. I don't know what it was, but uh, that's. And how did he get the job on the ship? I have no idea. And then, and how many years was it until you you followed with your we, mom? We came in thirty six. And then you ended up in upstate New York. Yeah, Finger Lakes and Cayuga. And um, is there a story about your dad saving a life? Well, my my father was uh, the ship's doctor on the Penland, and there was a seaman on a tanker 650 miles away who was very ill, critically ill and dying. And uh, they radioed uh, the Penland because they heard that they were nearby. And he was the ship's doctor, of course. And between the two ships, radio back and forth, uh, he gave instructions on f what they should be doing with this man and uh, got his symptoms and uh, eventually uh, he saved his life, and he got even he got his picture in the in the New York Mirror or New York Post or whatever the uh, mag, uh, newspaper was. That's great. And how did you get in? Something about the alien law. You were accept. You had an exception. Uh, there is something I, I'm trying to remember. Uh, in some document, it says something that we were. Oh, I. Uh, and my mother swore allegiance to the United States of America, and in accordance with the law that was passed in 1940 something, uh, under uh, under the alien law, we were exempt from uh, whatever that 
was. I, I'm not certain of that. And how was it adjusting to the United States? What do you know about it? I know you were very young, but what, uh, what had, do you know about their parents getting used to it? It was very, very difficult for my mother. She couldn't speak the language. She'd never done any housework. She never was a nurse. She was never anything. And she, my father had promised her that uh, we would end up in Hempstead, New York, which ended up, we weren't, we would, he was not advised not to. There was a position available up in Cayuga. So that's where we ended up. It was a very, very difficult time for her. Uh, I am assuming it was for him also, but uh, he, you know, he, uh, he got his practice started finally. And it, and he, then he opened a second office in Auburn, New York. And uh, so eventually he moved to Auburn when I was in fifth grade. I adjusted very nicely in Cayuga. Uh, you know, there was at the time the normal bullying, I guess you'd call it today. And I was picked on. And the only thing was to do was you had to, you had to fight back if they, you know. And I, I was engaged in many fights. And I guess once you let people know where you stand and... Uh, uh, they respect it and they leave you alone and you, you don't necessarily become their leader because they already you know, have a leader. But it, it, but I had good times. I, uh, at Kiyoga, you'd go out into, into tracking rab rabbits or tracking muskrats. What, what do I know? And, and swinging from vines and playing Tarzan. And uh, I don't remember having a time, a terrible time with the language. But I remember that the kids used to sit on the steps of the school and uh, I would be marching up and down in front of them uh, and speaking and they were all laughing because I didn't speak English, you know, and I was talking to them in German, I guess. Uh, but I, I survived very well in that town. Uh, I had good teachers. It was a five, five room uh, uh, schoolhouse. Nice thing was, a all grades, first and second, were taught at one with one teacher, third and fourth. And the nice part of it is if you were a little advanced, you got your second grade learning when you were in the first grade. So when I went when I moved to Auburn and got into fifth grade, I was always a, already a little ahead. And did you uh, were your parents at all religious at this point? There was not any, uh, uh, if they were, they were in their hearts. Uh, uh, there was, the, 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 there weren't any, uh, anything but uh, Methodist and Catholic, uh, no, not even a Catholic church, I think. It was a Methodist church and a, and a Presbyterian church, and that was it. And so uh, I wanted to assimilate. I, I, did, I can't say I wanted to assimilate. What do I know about assimilating when I'm in second and third grade? I wanted to be have friends, so I went with my friends on Sunday. And where did my friends go? The Methodist Church. So I learned a little about the Christian religion. How did that feel? Later on, it felt peculiar. At the time, it didn't. You'd say, you know, what the heck did I do? I, I you know, I, I, you know, I took part in all the ceremonies. I didn't know the difference. Did you ever? Uh celebrate any uh christian holidays like back in germany did you have a christmas tree? well did you in, in, that? In, i don't remember the german part but i know that when my grandmother came over uh we uh that's my father's mother uh we she lived with us in that 18 dollar uh, uh house and we had a christmas tree and i had my little train around there and uh yeah, and I, yeah, we did. How do you, how did they view the Christmas tree? Like, how did they see it? It's a Tannenbaum. You know, uh, I don't think they, we did not regard it as anything other than a beautiful tree with nice lights, and it was pretty. Uh, it didn't have any religious meaning to it at all. Uh, in fact, yeah, yeah. Did you have a bar mitzvah? I did not. No, there was uh, no. I did not. Did you uh, have make any Jewish friends growing up at all? I had a lot of friends. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say 
only because they were neighborhood people, because I was, again, uh, not not in, in that town when we moved to Auburn. Yeah, the Schwartzes and the Callets and people like that. Yes, I had uh, Jewish friends. But again, uh, it was uh, that was, I think, uh, 32,000 people. It had a very small Jewish population. Um, uh, the friendship was not based on religion. It was based on we liked each other and, and we went from there. So it was very mixed when you were yes. growing up. Yeah. And where did you go to school? Uh, I went in high school. I went to a school called Auburn East High School. And what year? Graduated in 1950. Mm -hmm. I was president of my senior class. Uh, I enjoyed high school. I really had a good time. I think I, I think uh, I was a bit of a social person and. Uh, a lot of friends, and I was an organizer and did a lot of things within the school, senior plays, all that kind of stuff. A leader. And then you went off to college, a few different colleges. Tell us about that. Well, I uh, decided that I wanted to be a restaurant and hotel management. And um, University of Denver had just opened up a brand new school there in hotel management, and I got accepted there and went there. Uh, the unfortunate part is that the altitude didn't agree with me, and I found myself uh, passing out. And after, I think, one or two semesters, I had to leave. Uh, I came home and, and worked a little, uh, and then uh, got accepted at Temple University, uh, where I stayed for a couple of years, and then uh, well, uh, then I eventually came home and went to work for my uncle in Chicago as a salesperson. And there was, was there City College also? Yes. Uh, later on, when I moved to New York, that was after being with my uncle, I decided perhaps maybe, I, or no, I didn't decide. My mother says, everyone's got to have a college education, you know. And uh, so I went to city uh, City of New York. A night school for a, a bit of time, and uh, then I, I ended up working harder and didn't didn't have the time or the night school hours. And when in this did your father pass away? My father passed away in nineteen fifty three. And at what the happened? age of fifty five or fifty four? Excuse me. And what happened after that? to your mom and... Well, mom stayed in Auburn where we had eventually moved. And uh, I tried to work in the local uh, rope shop as a laborer, hoping to move up the ladder. And eventually uh, I could see that it was not going to happen. And also I looked around the town and if you weren't a merchant or if you weren't a professional, uh, you, you were destined to, to stay there, uh, in my opinion, I don't want to say anything negative, uh, not, not what I wanted to do. So I decided to come to New York. And uh, in New York, uh, I had several positions as, sales, as a salesperson and went on the road for one company uh, selling uh, cake ornaments. And then I got a job selling bridal gowns. And then I got a job, and I lasted pretty good. I did very well in, in both positions. Uh, but then I got a job that selling uh, for a distributor of DuPont materials. And I uh, uh, was selling plastic and did very well uh, for about eight years. And then on somehow when I met my wife, my father-in-law was just going into business and he convinced me that there's only one thing to do is have your own business. So I went in with him, Phil Young, one of the nicest persons anyone would ever meet. Uh, and Phil and I built a nice business and he and I continued it on to this day. Great. And who did you marry and how did you meet? I, uh, well, when my mother moved to New York, we shared an apartment for a length of time on West End Avenue. And uh, then from there, we moved to uh, Pinehurst Avenue in Manhattan, that's upper Manhattan. 
And uh, in the elevator, I saw these two nice ladies, young girls. And I said, yeah, I need to get a date with one of them. But I didn't know which one. They were sisters. So I asked the one out and and uh, we've been together for 60, what, 65, 66 years now. And what is her name and wh wh when was she born and where? Uh, her name is uh, Lois. Her maiden name was Young and she still is. And uh, she was born in May 13th of 36 in the Bronx. And did she have an occupation or? Well, she was going to Hunter College at the time. So it was, I think, one of the reasons she married me is so I could drive her to, to, to school every day from, but no, kidding. Uh, uh, she ended up, uh, she took uh, as a interviewer for the state of New York, uh, interviewing, uh, getting people jobs, an employment interviewer. And she did very well there. She did get a teaching degree, but decided that she'd rather do this other thing. And did you have children? Yes, we have Amy, our oldest, and uh, she's married to Charles, and uh, and uh, Douglas, whose wife's name is Kim. Kim and Doug live in Greer, South Carolina, and Amy and, and Charles live up in uh, Park Ridge, New Jersey. And her last name is? Kobler. And your grandchildren? I have three grandchildren, and uh, the names are, are Olivia, who is the youngest, she's 15. Noah, the oldest, he's 24, and let's say Lucas is 22. And in your life, um, what kind of organizations have you belonged to, or in things, activities you've done? <laughs> Well, I became very active in Spring Valley in their town, in the village. I was, you know, in with the PTA. I got involved with that. That led me eventually, uh, because of things I was doing, to become a member of the Board of Education there for 13 years. Uh, I think uh, five of them uh, were I was the president. It was, it was one of the most interesting parts of my life because... I have a point around, I want to give back. The country has been so good to me. I want to do something for the country. I still do. I still frustrated at this age. I don't know how to give back anymore um, because nobody wants a 92 year old guy. They won't hire you. They will, even as a volunteer, they, you're too old to volunteer. So uh, I don't feel that way. I still feel good. And um, but some of the other organizations, I was with the B'nai B'rith, I got awards there. Um, I, I was involved with the first Earth Day uh, that this country had. And uh, I, not single-handedly, but mostly because myself and four other people got interested in Earth Day at the time. And we d uh, got the district, had a, a trailer, which was sitting uh, abandoned. And uh, we equipped that so it would become an earthmobile and each, each one of the 15 elementary schools contributed uh, displays and the trailer was taken from one school to another for a year. Uh, in that, doing that ecology thing, I became interested in it, very interested in the recycling and I reached out to a number of people and the uh, Marcel paper goods company uh, agreed to pick up our schoolroom waste. And that went on for a couple of years. But uh, recycling is a peculiar thing. If you get orange peels or apple cores in there, they can't use it. And there was enough of that. So that program had to be discontinued. But it was very successful. And as a result of both those two things, uh, the district made a proposal to the U.S. government and we were giving what was a, a large tract of land, which used to be army barracks, and it was called the Nike site. And the district was given that to uh, develop an ecology park. So I take some pride in, in, in having been a part of that. Uh, after my school, or well, during my school board uh, venture, uh, our son became very interested in soccer. 
And so we uh, went to Yankee Stadium where uh, the uh, New York News, I believe, was bringing in Pele. He was a big star at that time. And uh, so we went to that. And while we were there, I was sitting next to some people from Asbury Park and we were talking. They asked me, do we have soccer? And I said, I, in, in, in where we live, I said, no. So when we went back, I talked to the board, the uh, board, recreation board for the town and asked if we could start one. He said, well, I asked you, well, we can, if you'll do it. So he said, we'll give you, we'll take care of your insurance and we'll take care of uh, your supplies for the first year. So that was July 4th. And by September, uh, we had 380 kids. Uh, we had uniforms, we had insurance, we had balls, uh, and we had coaches. Anybody that had a foreign accent automatically became a coach because the people here didn't know that much about soccer. But if you were a foreigner coming in, you knew soccer. So we did that. Uh, I stayed with that for, I don't know, eight or 10 years. It seems like it. And they honored me by naming, uh, uh, the soccer league in my name, which, and we gave out every year we gave out a thousand dollars to each to three different high schools. And we gave them to seniors graduating who were going on to college. So that was pretty nice too. Uh, from there, uh, our town was, uh, looking to our, where I lived, they were looking to, uh, form a village. And so they asked me to come and help form the village. And I became a founding father of the village of Chestnut Ridge, New York. And so, uh, I'm proud of that too. Uh, but the soccer thing has followed me forever. Uh, it, it, five years ago, we were looking at a house in, in Florida and the lady says, are you Hal Block? And I said, yes. Well, this is our son. He's looking for a house here. And uh, he got a scholarship, by the way, from your, from your soccer league. So every once in a while, I'll, I'll run into my, someone that still remembers the soccer league. It since, since then has been uh, uh, taken in by another league and they became even larger. But my whole thing in, in the soccer leagues was to give kids fun. Uh, I was not as competitive as uh, so many others. We had a, a men's team, we had a kosher team, and uh, uh, I, that was a pretty a lot of fun for me. That, Did you play soccer too? I have never played soccer, and I don't think I've ever seen a full game of soccer because the games were played on on a Sunday, I believe. And uh, we had 13 fields. And I it was my responsibility to go to those 13 fields, make sure the referees got paid, make sure the referees showed up, make sure the games got started. So I don't think I ever I saw segments of every game in 13 different times uh, on a Sunday. Yeah. Great. And it, it, was there a scholarship fund with handicapped? No, the, 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 well, you, the handicap thing, I was chairman of a, the Ellen, Ellen Gilman scholarship fund for hand, handicapped children. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the other organization uh, that I should, <laughs> I should mention is my professional organization, which is uh, manufacturers agents for the food service industry called MAFSI. Uh, they're national. Uh, I worked my way through. They had local chapters, and I became president of that. You know, we work your way through the ranks, and uh, became eventually president of that. And then I became president of the national organization. So I got some very, very good friends at the Ma in Mafsi. I still do. I still, I'm still a member. Uh, so that 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 was certainly a wonderful time that I had with with and having with Mafsi. So many positive things uh, in your life, which is great. When did you learn what happened in the Holocaust? When did I learn what happened to the Holocaust? Uh, I followed World War II as a child. It 
in high school. And what I did was I had a big at a big atlas, and as as the as the United States and the Allies became victorious, I would color in the areas that they did. I don't think that in in those days, I don't think people talked about the Holocaust. I don't recall the word Holocaust in those days. Pe people were being killed, uh, but I can't say that, that that in those days during the war. No, I don't think I don't think we as a country realized, and I think it was kept from us intentionally uh, until after the war, until those. Those uh, concentration camps got opened up, and we saw the horrible things that these Nazis did. How did you feel when you saw that? I felt ashamed. I felt, I felt ashamed of being a German, and that the Germans did this to fellow Germans. Uh, I don't think. I think everyone has a prejudice bone. I don't think in their body. I don't think I do. But every once in a while, I say, "Hey, you're prejudiced. Uh, it's good to you realize you are prejudiced, no matter what. I don't care if it's for vanilla or chocolate ice cream, but you're prejudiced about something." So you felt you kind of were German at the same time. You, how did you feel about German German products or? I don't buy German products. There? I try not to buy German products. Uh, I won't buy German products knowingly. Um, I still have a little sense of it. I think it's sort of, you know, really shouldn't hold that out anymore. But then I see what's going on in the world. And is it starting all over again? Maybe it's a, just a little different area. Maybe it's also still in Germany. I sure is. I'm sure it is. Uh, I do remember, I think, when I went to... Uh, Parts of New York, I felt very comfortable. When I went to some other parts, uh, I didn't feel as comfortable uh, being a Jew. When was that? Well, that was even uh, into the 70s and 80s. Were you ever back in Germany? No, I wouldn't go back. I was offered a free trip to go back. And no, I mean, I mean, I was, I, I shouldn't even talk. I was, my car broke down. And my friend gave me, lent me his Mercedes. I didn't want to buy. I didn't want to drive it. Well, sure enough, my my wife and I went. We picked the car up. We drove it. She wanted a espresso. We stopped off at the. I picked up her her drink. Came back out. Tried to start up the car, and it was dead. So I said, "Hitler's after me." Next thing, next time with that car, I had a flat tire. It late at night again. I blamed it on Hitler. I have not bought a German car. I think they're wonderful. I think they're wonderful engineers. I think they're very bright people. It's just a crazy thing with me. All right? You want to buy it, that's up to you. So part of you felt German, but another part of you doesn't. You're just a little angry at that? Yeah. What they did. I, 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 yeah. And then when I see what's going on now, it's it hasn't it hasn't gone away. It's still there. They haven't they haven't learned. In Germany or somewhere yeah, else? Yeah, in Germany. I mean, I, I, my best friend, his, uh, her husband, and she, he was the president of AJC in New York, and their whole thing was bringing us together with Germany. And she and I always used to have these, con I says, I can't do it. And, but I could, I, I, I saw, you know, they were trying to do the right thing. They were trying to repair. And I was not in the repair mood. Did you reunite with any family members after the war? We didn't have anyone left in Germany. So there was, you know, they were all here. And so we did see our friends, our, our, our relatives in California, St. Louis, Chicago, uh, all over the country who were spread. Yeah. And how, is there anything else you'd like to say about any of this? Well, what I'd like to say is 
people should really appreciate this country. It has been so good to myself and my family. It has, you can make what you want. You have given the opportunity in this country, you have freedom. You don't know how precious it is. Uh, you have to really, and you have to give to it too. If you, you, you should put some effort and you should work to make this country better. And I, I love this country and, and the people have been so good to me and people around here, they, they're just so good to me. Uh, I can't believe it. I can't, I hear all this stuff going on around that, that people are trying to rip it down and uh, they, they should really look at themselves and they should look at this country and say, look what I've got. I even have the opportunity to bitch. I, but you have to be able to, to give. You have to give to this country because it's, we're, uh, we're, we're the only country that, that's, I don't know. I, I don't know what the words are now, but it's, to me, I guess it's God bless America. Do you feel related to Israel at all and what's going on? Uh, I am very upset about it. Uh, I have uh, a friend who's got all, a lot of his family there and, and uh, I need, of course we, we are hoping we continue to support Israel in their fight. I mean, I, where, where people, where a country gets attacked and then w there are people who attacked that country for protecting themselves and, and trying to defend and keep their country intact. Uh, I don't understand that thinking. Have you been there? No, that's a regret that I have. And yeah. Any final words? No, I think I, think I gave you my final words. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And who are they? Yes, this is a picture of my mother and her family. On the, uh, in this picture, uh, I would guess that my mother uh, is in her early, maybe 18 or so. The man on the right is my grandfather, Sigmund, my grandmother, Regina, my uncle, uh, James, my Uncle Ernest, and my Uncle Hans. Thank you. And who are they? This is my father's mother, Carolina, or Caroline, and my aunt, Hilda, and she ended up moving, getting married, and living in Buffalo, New York. Thank you. Who are these people? The photograph on the right, the taller one is my uncle Hans and my father, the, uh, my father. On the left side picture is my grandmother, Caroline, my father's mother, again with my father on the left and uncle Hans on the right. Thank you. And who are they? The lady on the right is my father's mother, who I've been calling Caroline. However, that's not what I called her. She is Oma Kern. Oma meaning grandmother, Kern meaning the town in which they, the city in which they live, as differentiated from the Oma that I had in Gelsenkirchen. The gentleman on the left is uh, Louis Block, her husband, who died at age 54. Thank you. And who are these people? Uh, the gentleman on the far left with a little a doll in his hand is my father. And the rest of them are his fraternity brothers. And it looks like they're having a pretty jolly good time there. Uh, he really had a good time with his fraternities. Do you know what college he went to? University of Cologne. He'd studied medicine there. Thank you. And who are these people? These people are my, my family at the time, my grandfather Sigmund, his, my grandmother Regina. I believe that must be my, the one that's hidden, my uncle Jimmy, my father, my mother, my uncle Hans, my aunt Hilda from my father's side, 
Oma Kern and her son, Hans, my father's brother. And which one is your father? The gentleman that was wearing the glasses. And your mother? My mother just below her, below him. Great, thank you. And do you know what they what they were doing? I would say it's their wedding. No. Okay. Thank 1928. you. 1928. Great. And who are they? My mother, Kate, and my father, Walter. And I would think that that picture had to be 29, 1929, 1930. Had to be before I was born. Thank you. What is this? This is a pictures from World War One, in which... My uncle Hans was a pilot, and this is of a plane of which he was flying. And what was his full name? Hans Block. Thank you. And what do we see here in these photographs? On the upper left, we have my mother with her two brothers, Hans and uh, Ernest, out a day at the beach in Germany. What beach would that be? I have no idea. Like uh, approximately? Mm -hmm. Nope. The bottom is my mother. I can't tell you where it is. Uh, on the upper right is my grandfather in front of his store with a picture uh, underneath it of the showroom with all the fabrics and stuff that uh, he sold. He also was on the road selling and he uh, drove around uh, selling to other stores. Cause, and uh, on the right is a picture of his storefront. Do you know what the name of the store was? Wolf. Wolf. I believe there's a some. You know, Wolf uh, Fabrica or something. And Wolf. what town was that? Gelsenkirchen. Thank you. Yes, on the lower right is a picture of myself. It's my passport uh, to come to the United States from Antwerp to Newark, to New York. The uh, passport in the middle is the face of a passport that my grandmother had. The picture on the lower left is a picture of us leaving uh, Germany uh, with my father, my mother, and myself on the rail, and a friend of family uh, next to us. And then there is a ship pulling into the New York Harbor in 1938 of August. Thank you. Yes, it's my mother, myself, and my dad uh, in the office that he had, it had been the Cayuga Manor. At that time, uh, things were very tough. And mom, who had never cooked before, and dad, who was getting paid not in dollars because his people were still in the Depression, he was being paid in peaches and chickens and berries. And so she had to learn how to cook and uh, and to can. we She canned more berries and chickens than, than you can imagine. We had them for years and years. Even when she sold a house in in, in Auburn, we still had berries. So, well, we there we there was no there was hardly any money. He got he got paid a dollar and a half for picking up your taking your blood in your house and driving it to the lab, and and um, then uh, coming back to you and telling you what your blood results were. Thank you. What are we looking at here? You're looking at his certificate that was presented by the state of New York to permit him to practice medicine in the United States. Uh, attached to that is a, a copy of his German license, which in the document that's shown says because the United States or the state of New York recognized his uh, education in Germany as being equivalent uh, to what you would normally have had to have in the United States. That's how come they granted that license. Thank you. Yes, these are articles that were printed in 19... I can't read it myself. Um, where my father was ship's doctor on the Penland, and there was another sh tanker that had a uh, individual dying of some sort of sickness, and they, they were 650 miles apart, and they radio communicated with each other, and as a result of many back and forth communications, uh, my father's instructions were followed, and the seaman's life was saved. Thank you. And what are we looking at? Yeah, you're, you're looking at, as it says, a certificate of loyalty, which my mother had to sign, 
Uh, in order to become a citizen, you had to swear that you would become loyal to this country. And it specifically is a uh, certificate, which uh, a law that was passed to permit aliens to uh, uh, become a citizen and that they were not no longer be classified as alien enemies. And this was important during the war. Thank you. Yes, this was a time in my life where I served on the East Rampo School Board, and I was there for 13 years, as it says, eight years as president. And uh, we accomplished a lot. Uh, I felt very satisfied, and I still do for the years that I've spent uh, in education as a as a layman. And that I think that I made a contribution in uh, to the school district, and have been was so recognized by the community. Thank you. This is my Aunt Hilda and my Oma Cohn, or <laughs> Carolina. And it's uh, quite old. It's probably, uh, it's definitely before we came to this country, probably uh, in the 20s. Thank you. And who are, do we have here? Here we have my family. Uh, our daughter Amy on the left. Son Douglas, son-in-law Charles, myself, and my wife Lois, and uh, they had put uh, Amy had uh, put together a surprise 80th birthday party for me, and it was truly a surprise and one of the best parties I've ever been to. I really enjoyed it. Had a lot of nice friends there, and uh, we were having a great time. Thank you. So what do we have here? This is an award I was presented by the American Jewish Congress that I'm very proud. I'm very proud of the saying because it basically it's, it's what I feel too. If I, if I am not for myself, who is for me? If I'm only for myself, what am I? If not now, when? And I think that really says a lot and I'm proud of this. And how did you receive this? What, what was it for? It was an award that's given uh, each year by the American Jewish Congress for people who have made a contribution to uh, to their religion and to their uh, and to their uh, 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 businesses. And how did they find you? Well, I've been a very active in 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 our uh, business associations, and I've made a lot of friends in it, and. Uh, um, it was uh, basically, uh, I've just been around a long time. <laughs> it's not, Thank a, you. not a very good ending. <laughs> Thank you, and this concludes the interview.